Alright, so this is going to be a tutorial on side chain compression. Um, there's a few ways to use this. The most typical way is in dance music. You're using it to duck all of your other instruments out of the way of your kick and your clap. And um, in, in like house music, this is going to add like a, a pumping, driving kind of sound. And um, in a lot of the more 808 psychedelic bass sounds um, you can use it to um, as like an actual remote like a side chaining remote to another sound to cause some type of pulse or arpeggiation in it and um, as well as using it to clear out the kick and the clap which will just give your mix a much tighter sound so there's a couple ways you can use it as like an actual effect and you can also use it as a way to clear um, room out of headroom out for yourself, so that way you can um, get your those mixes. This is going to help get that low end bouncing. Okay, so I'm going to show you the trick that I've been using, and so encourage you just to go set up your project file like this. So you, I start out with a template. You don't necessarily need to do that, but what you're going to end up doing is routing your bass synth and uh, vocals through this. Um, normally you wouldn't want to do your effects and especially not any of your drum sounds. Um, if you've got some like psychedelic, uh, really delayed out drum sounds, you might want to have a special um, side chain just for them. Um, so here we go. Um, if you, the easiest way to do this I found is if you group your instruments that you want to be side chain compressed, um, the actual group track that they're running to, if you set it to sends only, then what you do is you set up a send track that's going to be your compressor, and you're going to only send to that send on this group channel. If you want to add any other delays or reverb and effects, um, do that elsewhere, and you can even set up like a routing track, for instance. If you wanted to have this be your bass route, we'll call it, right? And we're going to, this will be bass route filter because we want to put some weird effect. Um, you go route this to the bass route filter and then this is going to go back to the group, right? So then you can come over here and you can dial in all these random things. But that's not what we're doing right now. So, so once you've got all this set up to where you're actually sending um, to this return track. The other piece of this is to have a click return track. So the best way to do this, um, the side chain itself is going to need to get the information that it, um, so whatever, whatever sound you want it to duck out of the way of, like for instance our kick and our clap here, you need to tell it what to do. So the way you can go about doing this, you click a little arrow, hit side chain, and tell it to get audio from. And the way I like to do it is I set up an entirely separate track that is muted, and all this has on it is a sampler or simpler with a white noise click in it. And I have flattened the width to zero and attenuated the um, ADSR to the attack, decay, sustain, and release to the um, to like a quick as sharpest little tick that I can get. And since I'm, the reason I'm using white noise is because it actually has the same response um, melodically if you're sticking MIDI notes of a kick or a clap on there which are going to fall in different places on the um, register of the note board right so make an example of that real quick right your kicks probably gonna be here your claps up here right so white noise however will create a scenario where that won't matter so the reason I told you all that nonsense was because once you've got your kick drum and clap pattern laid out, right, you've got all these crazy blah, blah, blah stuff going on in here, what you can do now is you can literally, if you hold Alt and drag something, it'll immediately copy it onto another track, right? So now what we can do is we can come in here to our actual drum kit sound, if this, that's what this is, and we can manipulate and change all of that while still having our sidechain information completely free. Because if you've ever tried to route directly to the sound that you want to duck, um, when you go to try to manipulate, freeze, or flatten that sound, Ableton will not let you. Um, so this way you set up a remote um, click. So now that we've got all that set up, 
what you're going to end up doing is coming in here and once you've actually well, we can get something pulsing I guess All right so So once you've got this dialed in, what I like to do is I'll bring up the gain to the threshold point just to make it easier to work with. These are kind of some of the settings I found I like where it's uh, it's not compressing hard, but what I end up doing is then I'll have a pretty heavy um, threshold pretty low threshold with you know a good amount of gain reduction occurring. And then one of the tricks with getting a really you know hard um, um, compression going on is having a slower attack so that way you don't end up with the pops in your sound. This will just help make it clean once again. And then this I just attenuate by ear. A lot of times uh, releases have to do with the BPM I find. And that's how sidechain compression works. Please like and subscribe.